Well, I'm happy to be here this evening. Uh, so the topic is to finding a refuge within. And uh, this, the idea of uh, uh, finding a refuge within, I think it's universal in some sense in every, every tradition. I think probably all the schools, all the belief systems, we all have that same principle and uh, here in, uh, <coughs> in Tibetan Buen Buddhist tradition, clearly that in our tradition, we say the ultimate refuge or the final refuge is that place in oneself, which we are referring here, I'm referring as a stillness, silence and spaciousness, these three aspect. A uh, reason why uh, we say stillness, silence and spaciousness is because uh, our body, our speech and our mind. So through our body we find the stillness, uh, through our speech we find the silence and through our mind we find the spaciousness. So when we go inside these three experiences uh, stillness, silence and spaciousness as even it looks different and you kind of you feel it's related with the different areas of our existence one is related with the body, one is related with speech, one is related with the mind but in the end experiences it's just one single essence and we call it Tigle Nyakchik a single sphere of light and that place is what I'm when I say finding in a refuge is to go to that place. So that is like a, um, it's the essence. It's not like a, the, the manifestation. It's not the uh, the manifested Buddha or manifested any uh, form of enlightened being. But it is the way these forms do manifest. So so that when we go to that place, there is no a shape. There is no color. Uh, there is no uh, definition, any form of religion, philosophy, that place go beyond all the philosophy, all the religion, and all the concepts and ideas, all the emotions and thoughts, and for sure, all the confusions, the fears and pain, it goes beyond all of that. So, but that place, uh, when we look for to achieve enlightenment, when we look for to achieve Buddhahood, and in Buddhism we call Buddhahood, uh, of course we are trying to, uh, first trying to realize that, we say one uh, reason why we wander in samsara or in, in this pain, place of suffering is because we don't have a recognition of that place, that essence. Because of lack of recognition, because lack of connection to that place, we are wandering in samsara, we are having these pains, we are getting confused, we are the cycle of rebirth again and again. So principle is to, to recognize that and then f fully realize that. So that is when you want to fully realize that, one is called, one is achieving the Buddhahood, enlightenment. So, but that place is in every single sentient beings. That means not only human beings, insects, uh, it says, uh, from higher enlightened being to lower insect, the smartest awakened being to the, maybe the dumb, this whatever you want to call it, <laughs> sentient being, that everybody has equally. It's not that experience, that place, it's not the Buddha has a better one and samsaric beings has a little bit lower quality. No, it's the same quality. <clears throat> so somehow we all have an incredible uh, a treasure, uh, a place, a wisdom in ourselves. Every single person, we all have that. And we, we are all kind of lost in touch with that place in ourselves. And that is clearly, is the, clearly the reason why, why we are facing challenge and fa facing pains and having sufferings. So that is the that is the point here. So when when we say finding in a refuge, the idea of finding in a refuge, how does how does that feel? That whenever we face a challenge in our life, 
uh, uh, basic challenges that uh, ch challenges like it changes one of the main causes of our suffering is change we are we have very difficult time with the changes uh, whatever we in one in one given moment whatever we identify with ourselves with one job we have difficult to change that job whatever identity one have one have with one given time in one's life we have difficult to change with that whatever way of ways we feel in our body identity I'm young or I'm old whatever that is we have difficult to change with it we have a ch difficulties the changes of our body the aging we have difficulties with the you know losing friends uh, so all these changes are causing a lot of pain and suffering so basic ones aging sickness and death and lo losing families losing something important things in our life that you are, we identify with whenever we face those uh, uh, strong challenges or pains so what we do so this, this is the main point so what we do when we need a real sense of support uh, typically what we do is we always trying to look outside because we always trying to find a re, uh, I say, uh, the answer outside every source of kind of happiness we think about uh, what makes someone happy we look look that answer outside we even look for ourselves outside when we're trying to find ourselves we look look that outside we look that protection outside and whenever, whenever we look that way we really truly we don't find it even sometimes we feel like okay I found something but then it, it always you come to a place it's, it's not really really helping so the best place to turn is to inside and the best inside is not only question about you know ideas or thoughts or feelings and emotion it's not none of this the turning place inside is just to simply find that deep place of stillness to come to that place a deep place of silence and to come to that place of deep a place of spaciousness so this place these three places the the most important can find a protection so I want I just wanted to say a little talk a little bit about this these three places this evening and also we will have some opportunity to practice and also uh, these three places as I said earlier that it is really like a when you go that place there's no religion there's no philosophy there's no boundaries it's just same for everybody the role of appearances, the ro role of images, the role of cultures, literature, of course they all have a role in every f different form of spirituality that exists on the earth. They all have, how you say, uh, important role. So somehow, uh, ways in which people understood in different time, different uh, places, uh, their different, the ways in which they understood that, that essence it's various so hist historically whatever the conditions in each different places and time it, people people have developed different forms of schools and traditions and uh, and main thing is to to try to communicate that and main thing is trying to understand that that essence and sometimes people go too far away losing connection to that place losing realization and understanding of that place and totally get lost into the form what actually will represent that and for what in the end what becomes is the form becomes most important and people fight for forms and colors and ideas and just destroy each other destroy the earth a lot of harm and suffering and pain is brought in this duality sense rather than uh, bringing more like a unity and more, more un unifying the forces and if you go to, if you're able to go to that place there's no divisions like that so in on an individual level we can you know 
on a collective level and both on a collective and individual level, we can feel that when, whenever we can come to that place, there's much greater understanding, its connectedness with every tradition. Even even between two people, whenever they come, when we come, they come from that place. There is more sense of connection. There is more sense of harmony. Even even within one one's own self, whenever you want, whenever you are going through your challenges and sufferings, pains in your life, when you come to that place, there is immediate sense of healing there. So it's it's a it's a great. Uh, as I say, probably the greatest uh, processor of any emotions and thoughts. So, now, what does that mean? So, these three areas, in, in the experience, how we do that is that, just think about that in your life, probably in this time in your life, when, when you face challenge, simply, very simple. You turn your attention inward. You see, there's a differences between putting attention inward and outward. What we usually we do is when we are, we are very when we are facing challenge. What we are doing is our attention is not inward. Our attention is on that challenge. I am afraid of my health. Help. I am afraid of this change. I am angry at that person. We have everything is like a focus outside. So attention is very much outside. And we are very, we have learned and we have expert maintaining that attention for 24 hours. We have meditated so long on it so we can maintain, you know. If you have to maintain attention on something else, for one hour, it's very difficult. And even even paid job, like eight hours of attention, paying the job is sometimes difficult to do. But paying attention to that pain, 24 hours, no problem. <laughs> you see, we are so expert on that. So <clears throat> it's important to recognize. Uh, many people it seems like it's very difficult to do that. And very difficult to change attention away from that place. Even during the meditations, you know, when you say, when you say, being open aware, we call it open awareness. They will say, well, I'm open. And I say, be open and just, you know, even you're feeling pain, be open and just look at the pain. I'm trying to be open and I'm looking at the pain. So two, two experiences are happening, right? There's one, I'm being open. The other, I'm trying to be aware of my pain. Which is, in a way, we talked last time here, is a, one of the best way of carrying one's pain. That means you are allowing your pain to breathe. You are carrying your pain because you are you're drawing attention to it. But you are not drawing negative attention to it. You are not. You are. You are different. The the one who is drawing attention to the pain is different from the pain. But most of the time, the one who is drawing attention to the pain is probably more painful than the pain itself. So you don't want that kind of attention. That kind of attention, we, all the time we do it. So, so being open, if you just, I'm just giving an example here. Being open and just being aware of your pain. See, can, can, can you do that? Being open, being, being like fully open, like a sky, and allowing the cloud. Does the sky have any problem with the cloud? Is sky is agitated? Is sky is saying you have been too long here? No. Sky is not making a comment, it's not agitated. It's simply allowing the clouds to be there. And when the cloud goes, sky is not missing them. Sky is not lonely. Just can, can one be that sky and host the cloud? If we do, if we are able to do that, our pain will be healing by itself. So many times we are not capable of doing that. So when we are not capable of doing that, then I say, then maybe it's a time to find inner refuge, not engage at all for the time being. When you face strong challenges, rather than in trying to engage and discuss and do anything with the pain, you just go inward. That moment, just go inward, completely inward. 
and find that place in yourself, the stillness. This is, this is a simple word that I'm using. And the question is, how do I find that stillness? St maybe that stillness could mean many things. The definition, we understand, something not, doesn't move, is called still. So if i not moving, means I look at my body, and if my body is not moving, I can feel the stillness in the body, it's a gross. When I look at it in my energy field, I can feel my energy, feel this calm, grounded, I can say, I'm still. I'm looking deep inside my mind. Thoughts and emotions are quiet. There's a silence there. I can say, I'm still there too. So these three, these forms of stillness, it's a recognizable. Because we, we know our body's movement, we know our field of energy, even though not everybody is very sensitive, but every, more or less we know. When we draw attention, we feel it. So, th so therefore, this is called door. So the body is called door, doorway. So I, when, I, when I wanted to find my inner refuge, when I'm really f facing challenges in my life, when I really wanted to find that place, I cannot say, where do I go, you know? If, if, it's a, if it's a house, there's the address, I will drive there, right? If there's an 800 number, 900 number, I will call. But how do I actually go there? How do I, how, how do I actually I will find it? So that is the question, obvious, very natural question. So how do you find that? It's just simply, if you have a body, it's a good thing, <laughs> right? If you don't have a body, maybe it's also a good thing then you don't have a problem with that. <laughs> so since you have a body, so you simply look, look, draw attention. This is a question about, I think it's, it's a very interesting question about attention. It's the right kind of attention. You draw attention to your body, more focused attention. I feel, hold the feel of my body. What I feel? I, I can feel stillness because I'm still. So that's my door. I'm feeling it. I go deeper, deeper. Maybe in 10, 15 minutes, I go, when I go through that in 10, 15 minutes, I'll arrive in a very deep place in myself. Place where it's, this is what we call this inner stillness. That inner stillness, it's indestructible. When you come to that place, you can, you know, that space that you're experiencing, that being you're experiencing, that energy that you're experiencing is indestructible. You don't take a refuge on something can be destroyed. Something changes. Something changes. Something can be caused by something. You take a refuge in what which does not change. And that place, it's, you can see it's indestructible. You can play with it even. You can try to destroy it. Can you destroy it? No, it's impossible to destroy it. And once you arrive there, your feeling about this is you feel complete sense of protection. Complete sense of protection. And so when you arrive there, that is what I'm referring to, it's inner refuge. It's one through one door, it's one inner refuge. And how do you feel refuge is, when you arrive there, you gradually you come to a place where you feel like a, everything is fine. Means in our tradition we call it, it's a place of great perfection. We call it great perfection. It's called Dzogchen. Great perfection means everything is perfected there. Everything is in that place. Nothing is missing there. So, not only is nothing is missing, not only it's great perfection, but I am beginning to have some sense about it. I am having, beginning to have some uh, glimpse of experiences, some taste of it. 
The moment I begin to have some taste of it, I'm feeling fine. And when I begin to be, feel fine, means what? I'm beginning to feel fine with some things that I'm facing changes. I say, fear, some things that I'm feeling fearful of, such as like a death. That very moment, I might, I might feel like, it's fine. If this is the moment, if I, I die, this is fine. If there's something really difficult that you, you're trying to forgive somebody, and then that when you, when you are in that place, you, f you feel such a richness of that place, so, or you can call it such a blessing of that place, you can call it such a power that you're feeling from that place, what, you, when you, what, what, what is facing from you outside, you feel like it's fine, I forgive, no big deal. If something that you need to, to let go, you begin to feel, I'll let go of that. Where do you suddenly, where, where suddenly that power comes from? That power comes from that place. That place is, place is a very powerful place. You don't feel it. That place is not filled with fear. That place is full of strength, perfection. Of course, for us also, the motivation to, 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 to enter that place is because of also things where we face challenges in our life. Now, once you are in that place, even though some emotions and feelings come, they, they, they can come, they will, it will be processed automatically, it will be processed by itself. That means it will come, it will not do to anything to you, it will just dissolve by itself because you are holding in that space, you are being in that space, you are that space, you are that being, you are that truth. And that truth can never, never be destroyed. And that truth can never be affected by the false things. So what, one, one of the most challenging things for most of the people is, first, to trust that. To trust that place. And we, we, because we know protection means protection from forms, security from money, protection from other forces. The protection from weapons, we, that's what we do. We cre create a lot of weapons that we feel secure. So if, if there's any sense of more security after all this, uh, the uh, nuclear powers and all this enormous machines, machine guns and all these things, what, what is created, do we feel more secure than before? No. But why we created them? We created them to feel this more secure. We create all those things to feel more safe. Do we feel more safe? No, we feel less safe. So those, what, what, whatever creation, whatever external creation for safety or feeling safe, it really doesn't work. Of course, that doesn't help. So it's not easy to convince everybody. But we, what we need to do, we do it. But in the end, does it really help? It doesn't. In the end, we need, one needed to find some other solutions. In the, end, in, in the end, everything what we create, possess in our life, what we think will help for our happiness, for our l l lasting long life, whatever, in the end, we kind of have to let go of all the things. So no matter what you have, it, in the end, it doesn't help. Then, then at that point, you, ha you, you clearly have to realize you have to find something that will help you. And that is the only thing is to go, go, go that place. And of course, you know, like when we talk about outer refuge, outer refuge, like in, a, in, in, a, in our tradition, we can talk about the manifest, manifested Buddha or manifested master or manifested knowledge, the teachings, the scripture. These are, of course, one another form of refuge. But why they are important? Because they represent that place. Otherwise, in, in, that, in themselves, they are not meaningless. In, in especially in our tradition, we, we believe so much in like even a script, a scripture, writing, writing of knowledge in a book. We put up a higher place. We make burn candles, burn incense. Put, uh, put touch in our head, trying to receive blessings. Why that book is so important? 
because what contains in that book, the message in that book is very important. Why that message is important? Because that message is about that essence. Therefore, it becomes everything becomes important. If it was not about that essence, then those books were just a piece of paper and ink. So, because of respecting that, we respect the book. So, in the end, sometimes, as I said earlier, that in the end, sometimes people lose the essence and caught up with the form. We lose in the same way. In a, many religions, happen the same way. Same way in our individual sense, same thing. In the end, we caught up our who we are. We, we caught up with what we possess. Or, or what, who, in our physical body, we get, we get caught up with this body. It's not, it's not to say body is not important. Of course, body is important. Body needs to be taken care. It's important. It's, a, it's also body, you know, we say it's body is very important in the, because in the body, uh, we say body is like a, a Palace of Divine. Ranglu Javi Chinkur is the body, is the mandala of one's, uh, how you say, one's body is the mandala of the Divine. Body is important. Why body is important? The same reason. Why it's important? Because in this body, I can experience the essence. That's why the body is important. Otherwise, body is not important. Therefore, body is a door. So, in, in order for me to uh, get in touch with myself, my, that, that deep stillness that we all long for, that I long for very much, is my body gives the access to that. To my open attention to my body, I can access that, that experience, that wisdom in, me, in myself. Therefore, my body is very important. So, uh, even to, to have that access to that place in a, the best way is also when we people talk about doing yoga. The yoga basically is yoga about that. You, you exercise, you keep these channels, energy centers open. You keep these channels open, not only just for the blood flow and, and, and blood flow, but it, to keep that energy flow, that, that awareness flow, that light flow in that, those places. And, and we are able to experience that, these inner stillness in a form of light, in a stillness in a form of energy in this body. That, that, therefore, this yoga is important, therefore, these breathing exercises are important, therefore, meditation is important. So in the end, what is most important is that stillness. And was many times, people seem like kind of forget about that. So, so, and reason why I say, like, again, I'm repeating this again, is that this sense of stillness and silence and spaciousness, sometime, um, for, for, for example, up for ourselves, the challenge, challenge that we face, the, the pain that we face, is sometimes it's like a body, not only talking about the physical body, but also a body in a sense of identity. Identity is like a, who I feel I am, who I think I am. It's completely false idea of ourselves. So if you look, if you look at anything, challenges that you're facing, if you say, I'm really going through a tough time in my life right now. Just think about it. This is typically where you say, I'm really having a hard time. I'm going, I'm going through a hard time. I am going through a hard time. I am going through a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> right? I am going through a hard time. So this, this I, we keep on repeating, I, I, I am going through a hard time. I am facing a challenge. I am getting old. I am sick. I, 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 I. Who is that I? Is that really you? That's what you believe. That belief is the problem. That belief is the fundamental problem. The moment you have some sense of that, I, I am bigger than that I that I'm often saying, thinking and feeling and acting like that. Even a little sense of that, I began to feel very free inside myself. 
And that's exactly what happened experientially, that's exactly what happens. The moment when I go through this skillful means, I'm, I'm trying to feel my stillness through my body, I arrive in deep place of stillness. And the moment I am feeling the sense of power of that place, it's, it's automatically that false sense is dissolving. Automatically, if that false sense of me is dissolving, the moment that false sense of me is dissolving, I begin to feel different. I'm beginning to feel okay. That the famous word. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's, aging is okay. Death is okay. This challenge is okay. I can forgive. I can let that go. No big deal. All these words are coming. Where is it coming from? It's coming from dissolution of that false self, who is thinking it is not okay. <laughs> it's, it's hurt me so long, so much. It's not acceptable. Who is that? Of course, there's a very, of course, you, in, inside ourselves, we have a very clear sense of that. Who is that? Very strong. So, it is so important in, 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 in a way, and that is the place what we need the protection from, from that ego, that I, that, that voices. So, when I say I, 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 somehow we have to have some connection with that. So how do you connect with that? You don't connect with that having conversation with it. You don't connect with that negotiating with it. You don't connect with that trying to win from it. Or you don't connect with that trying to destroy it either. You connect with that when you are, when you're being. I mean, just maybe when you're into simply feeling it. When a moment I say, I am feeling pain, that moment I go to my stillness, I go to my silence, I go to my spaciousness, from these three places, I hold that pain. I'm not allowing it to affect my stillness. I'm not allowing it to affect my silence in myself. I'm not trying it to affect my spaciousness of my mind, open awareness of my mind. I'm not trying to affect it. And I'm still allowing it, but I'm not allowing it to affect me. In that moment, I'm connecting with it. Because I'm feeling it, but it's not affecting me. The moment I come out from that silence, I'm saying, why are you here? I hate you. I'm working hard to get rid of you. You lost the contact. You should let, you should get rid of that voice first, then that pain. Well, that voice is the producer of that pain. The pain is probably simply existing there. That voice is creating more. And you think that voice is the solution. That's, that's mistaken. So therefore, because of that identity, the stillness, the door of the stillness is very important. Now, on another situation, it's not so much about the identity. What I'm calling here is the pain body. That, that I, that I, 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 is the pain body. It has its own speech, it has its own voice. And from that voice also we need protection. Sometimes we know how, how that voice in our head is so, so much bothering. You know, it's, it's, it's easy to get rid of people. It's easy to get rid of your, your job. It's easy to get divorced with somebody. But to get divorced with that voice is very difficult. You go to a beautiful holiday, its voice travels with you. You know, you go to the beach, it's there. Then that voice says, no, no, maybe the mountain is better. You know, you go to the mountain, it's there with the fresh air, you know. It's just, it's tra travels with you. 
So that voice is very, very bothering. So how, how is possible how is possible to overcome that voice? How is possible to overcome that voice? It's not possible to overcome that voice by talking with that voice. Which is what we do. We wake up two in the morning and somebody said recently somebody said, Oh, I don't have a problem with my death, you know. I don't think about that, you know, I'm quite busy with my work and I'm quite happy in doing data. I go out and have a lot of social socializing things I do. But two in the morning, yeah, I begin to think about my death. Well, that sounds very good time to do, right? <laughs> Nobody is disturbing you. You can f clearly focus on your death. <laughs> you know. So you, what are you doing? You're thinking, you're thinking about that. Of course, there, there's some sense of issues of death is there. And three o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning seems not a bad time to come up. So what are you doing? What do you do? You just co conversation with it. Talking, 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 talking. It's very no noisy. <laughs> and it's very noisy, and you could not go to sleep. So what do you do? Of course you hate to talk. I mean, you hate that voice. But you kind of don't know that hating that voice is another voice. <laughs> that talking with that voice is another voice. You kind of forget about that. So what do you do? Then what do I do? Well, what do you do is trying to connect with silence. Where is the silence? I don't hear anywhere. I don't hear anywhere. I don't see the silence. I don't feel the silence. I don't hear it. Of course you don't hear it because you're not listening to the silence. You're only listening to the noise. One time one, this one guy was living in a big, big piece of land and it sounds like a very, very quiet place to be and he's, he's very obsessed with the noise and he's listening to the noise. He's listening where I can hear the sound, noise. A big piece of land. And he has no idea about what noise means. He's just really careful listening. Then at some point he, maybe he hears or maybe he's even imagining it. That I think I'm hearing some noise from the other side of the road somehow. And he sues the real, realtor. Because I, 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 you were supposed to give me a place so I cannot have any noise. And here I can hear it. I think I can hear it. I think I, 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 I hear the noise. So he's, he, the moment he moved to that place, he's listening to the noise. Even, even if it's hard to hear, he's still putting so much effort to, li to hear it. Now that's what we do. I mean, that sounds funny. I mean, it is funny. It's kind of ridiculous to do that, but kind of in a ways we do all the time that we just kind of listen to our noises. Do we ever listen to the silence inside ourselves? Like, like right, right, right now, for example. If you listen it. You hear it. We learn, we learn more to hear that silence. The moment we hear that silence, that voice is gone. But hating that voice will never go away, that voice. Therefore, the second door, the door of the speech, is very important. The second door of the speech is to overcome those voices in our head. It's very, very important. And that is all the speech. I can talk a lot, a lot from the from from traditional point of view. Exactly these three places, what they their name, different names. I'm not trying to not go into that naming and defining and making definition and because I hear my goal is to f have some glimpse of experiences not to label them. Other times so understanding some labels are useful but that is not the purpose of here so I'm not going to name them but, but we, when we hear that silence any voice which bothers you dissipates right away.
The third door, third refuge is, is, the, is the mind. Like, for example, anger. When anger manifests, very explosive, you can feel that. Feel in your body, you can feel that in the energy, you can, you, can feel that, uh, you can feel that in your mind. And that moment, you, you know the spaciousness is not there. You don't see much, you, you don't see much. You, whatever, whoever you're angry at, you're angry so much at, at that person. Or, or what that person did. You're very disconnected with yourself, your body, your energy, your emotions. You're so much extroverted. You're not even really connected with the person. Probably you're so angry at what person did, action. There's no spaciousness. You lost the spaciousness. You feel very vulnerable. You feel like a very, it's kind of dangerous place to be. You might do something that will hurt yourself or hurt somebody. The space, protection is not there. So how then, in that case, as the most important thing is to enter through the door of the mind. What you do is, again, the same way, draw attention inward. Just for example, close your eye and then look inward. The anger is so explosive there. And what you do, take deep breathing. Just breathe out. This, the, the, the holdings that you feel in your body, Just take deep breathing for maybe five, ten minutes. And then gradually, as you feel more comfortable, and th then you look at that anger. But look at that anger with not other thoughts. Non-conceptually, you draw attention, open attention to that anger. When you look at that anger, Anger d dissolves, but if you're if you're looking with another anger, another disappoint, disappointed mind, anger will not dis disappear. Many times when I say observe, people say when I well I, when I observe it gets worse. worse. Of course it gets worse. You're not really observing the way I'm saying you observe. You're observing with another anger. You're not observing with the so-called open awareness. You have no idea, even the one who is looking at that anger, it's probably more angry than the anger which looks like a very explosive. The other one is more subtle, it's like a smarter. It's saying, I am the solution here, I will help you. And you, you think that is, the, that is the awareness, that is not awareness, that's another, anger, an, an, another layer of anger that you are not even have some sense of. When you look for, the, how you know I'm looking with the right eye or wrong eye? How, how I, I know if I'm look, doing the right, right kind of observation or wrong kind of observation? Well, it's simple. You see through the result. If the, you're getting more angry, if you're feeling more pain, you're looking through the wrong eye. If you're feeling less pain, if you're feeling less anger, you're, you're looking with the right eye. You are, you are looking with that open awareness which pro processes the anger. The anger will, anger will immediately become less. So, this, this, the medicine of the spaciousness, silence, and stillness, it, in a sense, it does not take, it's not a, how you say, let's say this way. It's so powerful, it doesn't take time. If it's the right one, it doesn't take time. What takes time is only to become familiar, familiar with that. That is another kind of time it takes. That's what we call meditation and becoming familiar. But if you, you have it, it doesn't, take familiar, it doesn't take time. If there's a darkness in this room, first, you need to find out how to overcome that darkness. To know, maybe candle will help. Electricity will help. Of course, we all know that, but not everybody probably will know that. If somebody never saw the light, Probably even will not know if the light will help overcome the darkness. Since we know it, okay, so we know that the candle will help, the electricity will help. It will take time to get the candle. 
which shop, where the shop is located, should I drive, what kind of car you're driving, should I walk, all those will require more time, but once you get the candle, and you light the candle, it doesn't take any time. A candle will not know how long this darkness has been. Candle will not say, this, this darkness has been too long here. I'm going to take, you know, it will take a whole weekend. <laughs> this, this darkness sounds, seems like a quite recent one, so I'm going to work it, work, quite, make it quite fast. <laughs> no. Light does not know anything. It just, only thing it knows is just a clear. It's just instant. And so the reason why, like knowledge, this ancient knowledge like Dzogchen in Tibet, why it's become very important, why it is, even in, in the West, it's becoming very popular and people, people get very interested in it, I think that's one of the reasons. Of course, you know, people can desire that. Desiring that doesn't help. But approaching in the right way, and what, what it seems like most necessary is some a c clear clue. You know, if you're trying to find something, you can say, give some hint. Okay, 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 you're going the right direction, that, that, that helps. Okay, you're going to the wrong direction, that helps. You're almost there, that helps. You're far away, that helps. But once you're there, you're there. So, stillness of the body, you know very well. This is the movement. This is the stillness. Do I ever listen to this stillness? Probably not. Many people do. Can I do? Yes, I can do that. And I don't need to need read many books to do that. I can close my eye and I can just be still and listen to that stillness. Therefore, this is a door. That means that you are familiar with You can do it. Once you do it, you will get there. Oh, I'm hearing so much voices in my head. I just wanted to be silent. Okay, don't talk to it. Listen to silence. Listen to silence even around and within that voice. Hold that space. It's gone. I have very strong active thought. I don't feel space. Don't think about it. Feel the spaciousness around and within that thought. Close my eye. The moment I feel that space, that thought is dissolved. The moment I hear little silence, that voice is immediately quiets down. The moment I hear, feel, connect with that little stillness through my body, that ego kind of melts down. That pain body melts down. Even collective pain body, like in a family. You know, sometimes you can feel in a group. You can feel the pain. That pain body, collective pain body. Or the collective noise. You can feel that. So you don't want to participate in it. What do you do? You're trying to hold the space. If you draw attention inside, you hold the space, you are already contributing something to that group. And you can see some things are coming toward you, and you, it, you can see it coming toward you, it dissolves. One less thing in that group. Another, another voice is coming toward you. you, you hold that space, it dissolves. Another pain coming toward you, you hold that space, dissolves. Another thought coming toward you, you hold that space, it dissolves. Everything, anytime it's something coming toward you, it dissolves. And what you're doing, you're contributing that, that stillness, that silence, that spaciousness. 
and you already you become a lot of things to dissolve there. So that is why what I call like an inner refuge. And do you have to go anywhere? No, you don't have to go anywhere. Do you have to remember to you take your laptop or cell phone or <laughs> remember the number or address or nothing? As, as, as I said, as long as you have your body, speech and mind, you're set. If you don't have any of these three, you're, it's better. You're free. <laughs> That, that's all, that's all. Now, so I will just ask another few, adds few more, and then we'll, we'll, I'll, we'll try to have short practice here. The other thing is here is that this question about how does these qualities arise, it's like a quality is like a caring, compassion, love, creativity, productivity, how does these things come? Of course, we can all, that's very important part, right? We, we want to, we just don't want to just be still 24 hours. We don't want to be silent for 24 hours. We don't want to be that spaciousness, just <laughs> that spaciousness can be, become a big problem for your boss. <laughs> <laughs> so how does this, that this inner, inner refuge, inner sacred space becomes a place of sources of qualities? It is an incredible a source of quality. And you will, you, you, will, you will feel it. You will know it. But it's important to have the, the attention right. You don't want to lose the attention and awareness. You don't want to get lost in that space. You want to be aware of that space. You don't want to get kind of lost in that silence, but you want to be conscious of that silence. You don't want to, as the same way, you don't want to get lost in your pain, but you want to be aware of your pain. Same way. So if you're aware of that, it's the greatest source of all the qualities. One time in during a retreat, I was, you know, talking to people about that, how, how the source is, and people were kind of wondering what, and after two days being in that place, and the most interesting experience all, during all the retreats that I have, have is that when, whenever I, I was as a teacher, when I was able to bring people at that place, was the I considered as the most successful retreats. And I, why? Because I can see I can see the result in the people. I can see uh, how they open up. I can see how they're feeling their emotions. How, how they're feeling they're, you know, they just basically open up every area. So, you know, things they're worried about, they're, they're, they're opening up for that. They're clearing that. The place people that they're not able to touch, they're able to touch. They're able to feel their gratitude, joy, love, compassion. You can see their heart and their, all these qualities are manifested. It's simply because they were in touch in that place. Not because they were working hard to cultivate it. That is again one of the, again, I'll talk a little bit about philosophical here. There's one of the big philosophical distinction in the Dzogchen and other lower sutric traditions in, in our tradition. And it's not, we're talking not about other traditions, but in our own tradition, there are different groups, different principles, believe. And says one of the unique things about Dzogchen, it doesn't, it doesn't believe so much in cultivating. Of course, it, you need to cultivate. It, it encourages to those who need to cultivate and that's the only way to do it. But it, it, it more advice is given is to go to that place and you will find it there. You don't have to work hard to feel love. Just give an example, in relationship, there are people who don't feel love, who don't, don't really feel affection to each other, and, but somehow they're married, <laughs> however, and somehow they found themselves being together and they have, somehow they have difficulty to let go of each other. Too old, need each other, fearful, loneliness, all hundred thousand reasons, they're together. Do they, why they, so they're working hard, they feel like something's missing, you know. I need you, you need me, you know, and we are getting old, we need somebody, you know. It's hard to find another, another one when you're old, you know. <laughs> 
So let's just be together even when we're not happy. Is that a good reason? No, of course it's not a good reason. So there's something that's missing here, right? There's some, some energy is missing, some livelihood, li life is missing, some joy is missing here. And what do you do then? They said, let's work hard, let's work hard, let's go to holiday, maybe that's what is missing. And you go to the holiday, like, yeah. <laughs> two dead people walking on a beach. <laughs> you see? <laughs> so, no, no matter what you do, if you external reason, you're trying to take holiday, you're trying to buy, go to shopping together, you're trying to eat together, you're trying to drink together, it just, you know, doesn't seem to working very well. Of course, there's nothing is in the in the Western world. Nothing is external and missing so much. Everybody, even people complain about they have enough, enough, more, more, more than enough. I mean, no, no matter who complains, doesn't matter. It's just it's, it's an idea of the mind, you know. Like if you go in the places, if you go in India and in places like that, if somebody has a car and a house with air conditioner, refrigerator with food, it's called rich, right? It's not so much about how much you possess, but the needs are quite a little there. So what is really missing is the connection to themselves. That's what is missing. If, if each person, if they went deep inside themselves, found that place of refuge, found that place of silence and stillness, and become more familiar with that place, and that place will naturally give the birth to all this quality. You will just begin to feel. You'll just begin to feel more happier. You'll just begin to naturally begin to feel more loving toward other people. It's the power of that space. It's the power of that being. That, that power of that stillness. It's, it comes from that. Like sky does not need to do anything to manifest such a beautiful universe. The seasons, the trees and flowers, the fruits. Sky, sky is not working hard. It's, it's a natural thing. If there is a sky and there is a space there, this, everything will grow there. What is there is lack of space. Lack of space. In our head, probably in our brain, maybe there's less space. The memory is full. You're not able to take it anymore, you know. It's like taking a photo, it just it doesn't work. In a sense, the memory is full. <laughs> One possibility, the other battery is down. <laughs> Two possibilities, that's what's happening to us. Either his memory is full or battery is down. <laughs> the either case, in order to charge the battery, you have to go to that base. That is the a source of power where one can better change. When you go in a refuge, when you go to that place, you can feel every second, every moment of that moment, you can feel you are rejuvenating, you feel you are charging yourself. It's, a, it's an incredible uh, charger. Your moments in that space, you can feel you are opening up yourself, the space in, inside yourself. That when you, when you come out, you can feel. You're coming. You're coming out in a different place you, because you feel so more space. You're you're ready to receive more. You're ready to give more. You're ready to share more. But we lack. We lack to go that place. So that's what it is. It's, that's what what we're calling. It is a source of source of all the qualities. So uh, so let's just uh, go. I will just do do a short meditation here. I will guide. Uh, through the three steps of the body, speech and mind. And uh, so, uh, yeah, so I basically I will guide the practice and so you all follow, follow what I'm trying to say here. <coughs> uh, yeah, so I basically I will guide the practice. And je so vais you guider la follow, pratique follow et vous allez essayer de suivre uh, ce que je dis ici. Essayez de vous asseoir bien droit, détendez votre corps. Amenez votre attention à l'intérieur.
So no matter whatever challenges that you are facing right now in your life, les épreuves que vous traversez dans votre vie en ce moment, ou les souffrances que vous éprouvez dans votre vie, l'aide ou les conseils dont vous avez besoin en ce moment ou que vous trouvez dans ce lieu de refuge. D'abord, amenez l'attention au corps. Soyez calme et ressentez le calme. De la plante des pieds au sommet de la tête, ressentez le calme. Attention au corps, ressentez le calme. Continuez, allez plus profond dans ce, dans ce calme. Une fois que vous avez trouvé ce calme profond, réalisez simplement que vous avez pris refuge dans ce calme intérieur, cette essence intérieure où vous êtes relié à vous-même. Vous vous sentez sans limite, indestructible, immense, lumineux, plein. Peut-être vous ressentez l'une de ces qualités, ne cherchez pas ces qualités, mais quand vous les ressentez, soyez-en conscient.
La deuxième porte, la porte de la parole. Si vous avez des voix qui parlent dans la tête en ce moment, ou si vous vous rappelez les voix que vous avez eues, des voix très fortes, des paroles, Amenez votre attention sur ces voies, soyez ouverts, et peu à peu, écoutez le silence, le silence à l'intérieur de ces voix et autour d'elles. Ressentez l'espace, écoutez le silence à l'intérieur de ces voix et autour, plutôt que de Parler, négocier, rejeter, inviter ces voix. Écoutez seulement le silence autour de ces voix et à l'intérieur d'elles. Au moment où vous entendez le silence, la voix va disparaître, se dissoudre, se libérer d'elle-même, comme des bulles dans l'océan. Les vagues ce sont les émotions, les fortes émotions comme des vagues ou alors les pensées comme des bulles vont retomber dans l'océan. Les fortes émotions, les pensées, les douleurs vont se dissoudre dans cet espace intérieur de calme quand vous entendez le silence. Ressentez, écoutez ce silence.
troisième porte, la porte de l'esprit. Considérer une émotion comme la colère ou la jalousie, ou quelques pensées que vous ayez, qu'elles soient fortes ou légères. Ce qui occupe votre esprit et vous empêche de vous sentir libre, c'est spacieux. Ou peut-être cette sensation d'être submergé. Débordé dans le travail les activités, quand vous ressentez cela, vous ne ressentez aucun espace. Ne regardez pas vers l'extérieur à ce qui se produit, combien il y a de travail, mais regardez vers l'intérieur, vers l'esprit qui se sent submergé, mis à l'épreuve. C'est votre porte, parce que vous ressentez cela dans votre esprit. C'est fort, ça occupe beaucoup de temps dans votre journée, dans votre vie. Regardez cela. Regardez vers l'intérieur. Cet esprit, et pas le travail. Ressentez l'espace. à l'intérieur de cet esprit et autour de cet esprit qui se sent submergé, ressentez l'espace. Vous commencez à ressentir de plus en plus d'espace. Vous commencez à ressentir que vous perdez les tensions dans votre corps, dans votre respiration, dans votre esprit. Vous commencez à vous ressentir détendu. Vous commencez à éprouver une connexion avec cet espace. Vous commencez à ressentir que vos batteries sont rechargées. Votre, que votre énergie est rétablie. C'est le refuge intérieur de cet espace qui représente le Bouddha, les êtres éveillés.
C'est bien. Okay. Well, battery is more charged. The space uh, memory is more full. How is it? More space. So, so this is uh, like uh, the the example of charging battery is and uh, creating space in the memory by deleting all these unnecessary files. Uh, so. Um, the the wire is the, the, the wire is like the awareness the awareness like of course uh, in some sense we are always connected but we are it doesn't help to be connected but awareness is important so the being aware is the actual wire way it's connected it's connected to the base it's called base so the so our our existence through our awareness connecting to the base, we get charged. This is what is happening here. Does it make sense? <coughs> okay, so I'll just leave a few uh, space for a few questions here. Okay. Or maybe even from, from online, if <laughs> anybody have a questions, Polly, maybe you can. <coughs> yeah. Spell out. By sleeping. She wonders if the way to connect to your inner self can be through sleeping. Through, through sleeping? Um, well, it, it's possible. It's called sleep yoga. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. So, but it's not that easy because when we follow sleep, we lose the connection. So it, it's a whole another training to maintain that connectedness while you're sleeping, to maintain that connectedness while you're dreaming. And that's if you're, if you're, and the, if you're trying to do that through dream, it's called dream yoga. When you're trying to do that sleep, it's called sleep yoga. It's true. Yeah. So it's possible, yes, it's possible. So, uh, yeah, it's possible. So let's leave it there. Yeah. But I would say in a while ago, I know about the state of deep sleep, mm -hmm. that is very similar to what we just experienced. Mm -hmm. I, for what I know about, why I read about the state of deep sleep, anyway. Mm -hmm. and I, the, question, the question I had was, uh, the place of stillness that you mentioned, is that the same thing as what the Hindus call the self? And when you go into that deep place, is that, would you say that you're realizing the self Yes, yeah, you can say that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, it's so it's a, it's not a question about Hindu, Buddhism, Christianity. It's it's here we are trying to talk something not really about the idea of different religion here. You know, like. Of course, we can always refer back to the one they talk. Does that mean that we can say that? But yeah, this this sense of when we say about I wanted to know myself, right? And uh, know so who 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 is oneself? Oneself is not the self is not the one who is conditioned and bounded and limited by the ignorance and emotions and pain. The self is some, some one, one thing which is free from all those things. And sometimes even, even I, people, a lot of people get confused in a Buddhism saying, oh, Buddhism does not talk about self. It's, Buddhism always says selfless, selfless, selfless. That's not true. In, in Buddhism, there is a Buddha in the scripture, there is a saying, there is no self, there is no I, no nose, no, no this, no that, no that. But there is a, it, there is a how do you say, interpretation for that. It, does, it means there is no inherent self. It doesn't mean there is no self. Of course, Buddhism believes in self. But there is no inherent self. There is no independent self, imputed self. There is an imputed self. That when I, when I feel me, it's there. When I say I, for example, when I feel I am Tibetan, it's there. But that's called conventional self. But it still is a self, 
still exists, it exists, it's called conventional self. When I go into deep in the stillness and I have come to that place of unbounded, pervasive, indestructible, that is ultimate sense of self. That's ultimate truth. So, so if I connect with that, who I am, I cannot be destroyed. I cannot be changed. If I am connected with the Tibetan, we, all, we already lost our country. We are already losing our identity by generation to generation traveling in different places. One day for sure, next gen few generation, there won't be anything left. So that, that is changeable. We're trying to say, and what, what changes bring suffer, suffering. And of course, that aspect, relative aspect, is always there, and you cannot ignore it, but it doesn't have to be mean empowering place. I can have a car, I can have this, and all these things, it's fine. And if something is coming toward me, it's fine. I don't need to go crazy about it. So it's the same thing. So place where we are trying to connect is that place. And most of the people have very little connection to that place. That's why we suffer. And that's why the sense of protection is if we even whatever suffering that we have, if we get closer to that place, we feel naturally we feel protected. Because just you know, it's like a just imagine, like being hanging out with a good friend for a weekend when you're in trouble. How much it helps? What? Hanging out with that place? No comparison. No comparison. Yeah. Could you say a little bit about the distinction between silence and spaciousness? Silence and spaciousness? Yeah. So in ultimate sense, silence and spaciousness is the same thing. Same thing. There's no differences in the ultimate sense. The differences in, 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 differences in how we experience that. It's like a vo it, it's the ego and the voice of the ego. For, for, I'll give one example. Let's say somebody, this idea of pain body. There are people who, who, is very, who are very stuck in their pain body. They don't have a voices for that pain body. They don't talk about it. But especially like some, sometimes it's more, more, more main, man. Like them. <laughs> you can see in their face. You can see in the position they sit. But you don't, it's hard to hear that. They're very silent. I mean, voice will be good for them to say something. Expression of some, expressing some anger will be good, healthy thing to do. But they don't know how to express through their mind. They don't have a voice. They're like that. They're stuck in their pain body. So those kind of people, the only way for them to overcome that pain body is it's to be just of that. I just humorously say, I, I always say, Monday morning face. You know, people, you know, if, if, in the West, you have Monday morning face and you have Friday afternoon face. <laughs> okay? So, Friday afternoon, even, even, in, they say, even, even in American Embassy, you know, in, in India, they say, people try to go to on Friday. They say, more people get a visa on Friday. Monday morning is very hard to get visa because everybody is depressed. <laughs> you see, so they have. So we all know if you look around Monday morning, you can see the Monday morning. First. You can know what I mean by that. Friday afternoon, you can see that they have a different body, they have a different mind, they have a different face. So some people very stuck in that the body. So it's important for them in order to be liberating for themselves or. Or, or, or trying to grow personally, personal development or spiritual development, for them it's very important to recognize that pain body. That they are, they, they are really stuck in there, un, unspoken. Either they are stuck in their voice. 
They don't know how even they feel. They will keep on talking, 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 talking. If you really listen closely, they're, they're so confused what they're saying. They can, you can see this, it doesn't correspond to anything. Why? There's no meaning in what they're saying. Because why they're saying that? It's coming from their pain, body. It's coming from that pain. It's, it's, it's like a releasing. You know, sometimes people will say, I, you know, I, I say stupid, just let me talk. And almost they will say sometimes that you really don't have to listen as long as you let me talk. <laughs> I'm happy. <you> know? <laughs> and that's the one time I met somebody said that said to me like that. Ah, let me just talk. If you don't feel listening, don't listen. Let, let me just talk. Like, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't listen, then what is the purpose of talking? It's for them, it's just like a, their pain body is breathing. That's all what it is. It's not they're they're needing somebody to listen. This. <laughs> It's like a breathing, you know. <laughs> so, so the, these doors are important. So, the way we express our pain out, they become door to us. That's why it's called door, doorway. And the more, whichever through whichever you express most, that is most likely a doorway to you. Some people, silence is very good for them. Some people, connecting with that stillness is better. Other. Trying to feel spaciousness is better. It's 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 very very helpful. Any, yeah. Anyway. So yeah. Yes. Well, we say we have, um, I guess, between um, 180 and 190 computers that are watching okay. all over the world. We've got you know, people from uh, France, uh, from the Netherlands, from Poland, Mexico. What time? It must be one o'clock in the morning, right? Yeah, <laughs> some people are staying up very late. Norway, uh, Hong Kong, Germany, Toronto, Canada, and then uh, in the United States we have Connecticut, Maui, Idaho. Uh, these are just uh, some of the people who have uh, spoken up. Okay, uh, sure. Uh, we have three questions that are very similar, and I thought I would mention them but from three different people. Uh, one says, uh, how can you do this practice in a noisy environment? Another one says, what can um, I do if the energy of pain is very intense and it's difficult to connect with the spaciousness? Pati the spaciousness. Uh, a third person asks, is there a way to keep connected with the silence while I'm working? Mm -hmm. So it seems like they're, they're sort of yeah. So, I mean, it's a good, very good question. So, um, for example, the first question is how I can uh, maintain uh, silence in a noisy place, right? For example, if you listen to the noise, noise becomes stronger and stronger. If you're listening to the noise which is bothered by that noise, which is, which is in your own head, then you have now two noises, one from outside, one from inside. And somehow, somehow when, you, when you're really like having trouble with the, that noises, you're having, truth is you're having more trouble with the noise inside than the outside. At some, some point, in, inner voice, inner noise is so strong that you even forgot about outer noise. You're just, noise, it's noisy, it's noisy, it's noisy. This is the noise. <laughs> Not that, you forgot about it. it, it began from that. But at some point, what you really have the noise is, is in your only in your head. So what do you do in those cases? You just first you have to be aware of that. And when you hear the noise, for example, you close your eye. And listen, the silence in that noise. Silence in those noises. There's a silence there, which I'm not hearing it. I'm just hearing the noise. That noise is triggering my noise here. If I listen to that silence in that noise, I'll hear my own silence inside. I'm hearing my silence inside. When I begin to hear a silence inside, that noise is gone. Even if it's so strong, it's gone. It's gone. So that's how you listen to it. Now even, for example, a situation of conflict, just, which is we all need in our life. When you face the challenges in, in your life, the same case, similar case, you, you don't feel the spaciousness. You feel there's one individual there, 
There's a big space, but there's one individual there who is occupying all that big space. I don't see anything. I don't see anything. I just don't you feel like that? Don't you feel like that? There's one being person there. You feel like this. It's occupying whole space. I'm talking external space. I'm not talking internal space. I'm talking all external space. You feel all the space. And how why it feels like that? Because my attention, that point, it's like this. That point. Therefore, I don't see anything, I see occupied, limited, bounded. How I can go beyond that? First I have to be conscious about that, wow, I'm going crazy here. <laughs> That's one possibility. Another thing will be, well, this is space, of course there's a space around here, but I'm just not feeling it. Of course there's space. Of course there's inner refuge. Inner refuge is always with me. It's everywhere with me. Regardless I'm aware of not, it's with me. If I am open, I can try to connect, I will connect with it. I'm, I'm aware of it. That very moment, I draw my attention to the space. Wow, I feel it. I feel that space. I look at inside myself, I feel that space. I look at outside myself, I feel that space. I am holding that person in my space. I'm holding it. I'm even protecting that person. Even actions of that person, I can feel, but I'm protecting myself and that person. And I can feel the moment I'm losing that awareness of the space, I can feel I'm, go I'm narrowing my attention like this. I'm feeling more attacked. And I'm, I'm opening up myself like that. And I'm feeling I'm protecting myself and that person. If I'm able to hold long enough, and I know the value and beauty and, and the sacredness of this space, of that awareness, I'm also beginning to feel some quality, some compassion, some care, to this person, toward this person. I'm hearing and I'm hearing the pain of this person. This person is in pain. This person is just trying to express his pain or her pain. And just confused, happened to be attacking me, but truth is, it's just saying, help me, needing a help. And I can, this moment, I can be helpful to this person to contain that pain. I'm holding the space. That I'm not only, that place is not only protecting me, that also protecting this person. So that's how you, you hold the space, no? Yeah. Any other? Maybe one more question? <laughs> 